Welcome to the basic identification and operation of hand tools. Welcome to Vehicle Maintenance. I'm Ammon First Class Young, the 113th Wing here at Joint Base Ammon. And I'm Senior Ammon Butler. So today we're going to explain over 30 tools, the basic identification, operation, and how you're going to use them in your everyday life and throughout your career. All right, so this is your half inch breaker bar. Basically what this is used for is to get into tiny places or places that you can have real tight screws or bolts that you don't really have enough torque with your standard ratchet. This will get the job done when nothing else will. So this is your half inch ratchet. This is designed to use for bolts that are really tight. Notice the size of the head, just a half of an inch. This is your 3 8 ratchet, also used to get bolts out. Bolts may not be as tight when you use a half inch ratchet, but this is your 3 8 inch ratchet. The size of the head is 3 8 of an inch. This is your quarter inch ratchet, mostly used for smaller bolts, but the head is the size of a quarter of an inch. So the basic use of a ratchet is really simple. If you look on the back of a ratchet, it has an on and an off switch. Very simple. If you want to take a bolt off, you switch it to the off. If you want to put a bolt on, you switch it to the on position. You want to use a socket with a ratchet to remove the size bolt. Like so. Put a bolt on. Take a bolt off. So here are your extensions. You can use these extensions on a 3 inch ratchet, a half inch ratchet, or a quarter inch ratchet. You have a 3 inch extension, a 4 inch extension, and a 6 inch extension. What they're used for is you take your ratchet, you grab your extension, and you put it on your ratchet. Generally, you use an extension for when the bolt is further away than the use of a standard socket so you can have the extra leverage. Looks just like this. Now you can access a bolt that's this far away using the extension and the socket. So here are your sockets. Your sockets are used to go on the end of your ratchet. Again, a 3 8 a quarter inch, or a half inch. There are various sizes of sockets and they come in different shapes. So today I'm gonna to show you the difference of your sockets and you'll know which one to use for what type of application you have. Here, we have a six point standard socket. Generally a standard socket has a slash in identification and lets you know what size it is. Six points showing you the different points of contact that you would use to touch a bolt. Looking very, very similar is a six point metric socket a 15, again, with six points. So these little guys are a reducer and your swivel sockets. This is designed to change a half inch ratchet to a 3 8 ratchet. This is how it works. You take your half inch ratchet and you try to put a 3 8 socket on there. Notice that it won't fit. What you do is you take your reducer to reduce the size from a half inch to a 3 8 inch. Stick this on your ratchet, like that. Now the 3 8 socket can go right on your half inch ratchet. Just like that. Next is a swivel socket. Your swivel socket is designed to get into tight places where you don't have a lot of clearance. This also comes in a half inch size, a 3 8 size, and a quarter inch size. This is how this works. You take your ratchet, hook it up. This is designed to move to allow you a lot more play when you're trying to get a bolt that's in a tight place. Here's a few of your standard pliers. You have your needle nose pliers, your standard pliers, and then your wire cutters. All three of the pliers have a very similar job, but they are used for different applications based on their different types of heads, and you can use them for most of your needs inside of the shop. Next, you have a pry bar, a hand file, a chisel, and a punch. So here are your wrenches. Have a lot of different size wrenches and a lot of different styles of wrenches. This one is a ratcheting wrench. There's a 12 point in at the bottom that ratchets itself. This is related to the ratchet that I showed you previously, but it's on the end of a wrench. The opposite end of a wrench is the open end. So you hear someone refer to this as an open end wrench or a boxed end wrench. This one would be called a ratcheting wrench. This is very similar, however, this is a standard 12-point wrench with an open end. 
This is very similar. This is a six point wrench with an opening. Very similar to the sockets that I explained to you earlier, these also come in standard sizes and metric sizes. This is an adjustable wrench. Generally what this is used for is to make it any size from a standard or metric size. You use the adjuster here and you turn it to open up the head of the wrench. Using this will allow you to adapt to any size bolt or nut that you need to to use this adjustable wrench. You can adjust it to any size, which is why it's called an adjustable wrench. This is an oil filter wrench. Generally, the oil filter fits inside of this slot. You grab the handle and you remove the oil filter. As you turn the wrench, the wrench gets smaller to grip the oil filter to remove the oil filter off of your vehicle. These are your screwdrivers. This is your flathead screwdriver, or also known as a standard screwdriver. If you look at the head, you can see that the screwdriver is flat. This is a Phillips screwdriver, or a T-screwdriver. The front of it looks like a cross. These are used for flatheads and Phillips style screws. So here are your hammers. You have very different styles of hammers, but these are some of the most common hammers that you probably see inside of your toolbox in your shop. This hammer is generally used for things that are in really tight spaces that all the screws and nuts and bolts are out, but you can't get it to move. This hammer is a four ounce hammer that allow you to remove things in tight places. This is your ball peen hammer. It has a really small head on it, which doesn't have a significant blow as a, the hammer here, but it also has two different styles. Hit something with a small point, like a punch or a chisel, you could use this end, or to knock a pin out, you could use the ball point end. This is a flexible pickup tool. This is used for if you drop a bolt or a nut in a hard to reach place, this is your answer. This is how it would work. If a bolt drops, you take the pickup tool, you want to push the top of the handle of the pickup tool with the spring like this. What this does is it opens the fingers on the end of the pickup tool to allow for different size nuts and bolts. Once you locate where the bolt is, you point the pickup tool down, you push the top of it to grab the bolt and let the top go. Once you let the top go, it grabs onto the bolt and it now picks up the bolt from wherever you dropped it from. To release it, you simply push the top of the tool and the bolt lets go. So these are your impact guns. Very similar, however they are very different. One's battery operated, one's air operated. Here's how they work. There's a button here that allows you to put the bolt on or take the bolt off. You push it in to put the bolt on. On the other side, you push it out to take the bolt out. Very simple, push to go in, push to go out. Also, to use this, there's a trigger here, very simple, to allow the tool to pick the bolt off or put the bolt on. Here's how it works. Always make sure you have hand protection when using power tools or air tools so that you don't damage your eardrums. You take the impact gun, decide which way you want the bolt to go, on or off, and you pull the trigger. That'll basically pull the bolt off or put the bolt on. Again, very similar in operation is the air power gun. Does the same thing as the battery operated one, just slightly different. The change of the direction is on the back of the gun. To put the bolt on here, to put the bolt off here. So you switch to whichever direction you want the bolt to go and simply pull the trigger. And those are your impact guns. Now you can identify and operate over 30 different hand tools throughout your shop. Again, I'm Emory First Class Young, this is Senior Emmett Butler from the 113th Wing at Joint Base Handling.